our next step here in the process is uh, let's get some of the information on per page, which some of you might have already done by now, putting in some sheet numbers um, and the actual title. Uh, and that's actually pretty simple. Um, so go back to the Home tab and uh, take a look at your layers. So we actually have the layers from our referenced file in CAD. Um, you, can't, you can't actually use them, but they're there because you can actually turn them off, which is pretty nice. So if I didn't want to see the text of my title block, I can turn that off. It's active in that sense. Um, or freeze it or lock it or something like that. Um, so what we need to do is probably add a few layers to this in, in order to uh, get the information that we need. But um, I, So I need to add particularly two of them right now, and I'll explain to you why one of them is very, very important shortly, shortly thereafter. So let's go into Layer Properties, and I'm going to add a text layer. And in keeping things consistent, I'm going to also make this one red. So I'm going to make another one. I'm going to call this one VP. And you should also call it VP or Viewport. And I like to leave those black, but you don't have to. And here's something that's very, very important. So pay attention to this, guys. The viewport layer is where I'm going to place all of my viewport boxes. And I'm going to set it so that it won't print. So that I don't have to worry about turning the layer off every time I want to export or print. I can just go print, and it won't show that layer in the PDF or you know when it prints it. And that's right here. So this plot column, it's a toggle. It's for a plot layer or a no plot layer. And so if I click on that printer, it puts a little uh, red circle slashy thing, Ghostbuster style, on it. And so that means that now this layer won't plot. So I just take all of my viewports, which are these two objects right here. They're objects, readily selectable and I have to switch those onto the VP layer. And, you know, without foresight, thinking about that ahead of time, now I need to go back to all of my other layouts and do the same. So I'll select that, put it on VP, go to 3, VP. These two I'll put on VP. And this, these ones on VP. So now back to layout one. <clears throat> so here's what happens. And I'm going to do a quick plot preview so that you see what it's going to look like on the page. And your, your plot is going to come directly from the layout tab. So if I go down to the bottom left corner and I right click on layout one and I go to plot, Sure. I don't know why we have to reconcile these. This is a newer feature that I never really looked into conceptually. Uh, I don't truly know what this means, reconcile layer. But I do it, and it works. So uh, I need to look up what that actually means now that it's becoming relevant. Anyway. Um, so you go to, after you do that reconciling layers thing, you go here. Um, you can, don't worry about batch plot right now. We're going to just do single sheet for right now. So uh, plot a single sheet. And don't worry about the settings here. They all, they all match what you set up in your page setup manager when you created the page. It's all the same settings. So you'll see that it says monochrome, Adobe PDF, letter, uh, plotting layout, all that stuff. So rather than hitting OK, I just want to do a preview. And this is what it looks like. 
So this is significant because now you notice that in my file where there was a box, now there is none. Okay, so that is how you get a view on a sheet without seeing some silly box somewhere. So real similarly, on the same subject, this is all kind of the same stuff here. I'm going to go back into my layer properties, and I notice that the, the magenta lines that I set up to align my text to, that was never meant to actually plot. I just want that to be there so I can align my text, and then it won't print when I print, when I plot. won't print when I print. Um, so I actually think you can turn it off from the link itself, but you could also turn it off right here in the file as well. So I uh, turn that line layer off, and let me just double check and make sure it's working properly. So I right click, I go to plot, sure, single sheet, preview, and now that line is gone. Sure, yeah. Um, you, put, you open up layer properties, you go to the layer that you don't want to plot, you check it off in the plot column. Then when you go to preview, it won't show up. So you go to plot, continue, preview, and it won't show up. Are there any questions? Pretty simple stuff for that. So um, the other thing I wanted to get in there, and I created a layer for it, is text. So this text should follow the same properties as uh, the text that I included in the title block file. So when I go to single line text, I'll just borrow all the same information, but notice how this one, the text height says quarter inch. Um, so I need to double check my units, make sure, I, okay, so I'm precision one eighth. That's good. So I can, I want one sixteenth. Yeah, so I'm gonna change my precision to one sixteenth because I want three sixteenths inch text. No, hold on. I need to measure that text because I think, I think my precision. Yeah, I think it's just quarter inch. Well, let's try it. And we'll find out. So, um, single line text. Start point of text doesn't really matter where. I'm just gonna click. And I'm going to type in 3 sixteenths of an inch and hit enter. And my rotation angle is going to be up. And I'm going to call this one floor plan. So my text, it looks like my original file doesn't have the same text for some reason. Three sixteenths in height. So why does this have annotative and standard and this one doesn't? Hold on. Um, I don't know this. I don't know this for sure, but I think that the reason this file right now does not have the standard text types that the template has is because we opened it up from a Rhino generated AutoCAD file. So it won't have some of the standard properties that are built into that template. So if you set up a template to have certain text styles, what you should do is rather than opening up that AutoCAD file, you create a new file using the template, and then you um, insert all that uh, insert the drawing file from Rhino. Does that make sense? 
see a lot of blank stairs. So let's do it real quick. Um, create a new file, right? It takes the template information and then you go to insert and you insert a block, which for me, that block is just going to be, and you guys don't have to follow along, I'm just showing you, okay? So that block for me is going to be the set of drawings that I exported from, uh, from Rhino. And I hit OK, I drop it in. Now it lives here in the file, and when I go to my layout and I draw text, now I have standard and annotative. So it's a part of the template. The reason we don't have it is because we just opened that file and then we started adding on to it. So um, <coughs> let's see if I could just borrow the property by copying and pasting into my existing file. This is a little different for me. I usually just set up my text myself. So I go into my title block and I do a control C on the text. I go to my page and I do a control V. Okay, so it doesn't. Interesting. In other programs it does. All right, so then um, I think we got to venture down the road of actually introducing the text style setup now, uh, which is good because it's it's good to learn it sooner. I just didn't want to, you know, give you too much at once. So I'm going to stop the video here. Um, I think we're all at this stage already, so I'm just going to roll right into the text if that's all right with you guys.